Hi, fans. My my name is Hester. I'm talking with famous people, and well, I should be prepping this debate topic. I'm instead here live streaming about it uh, and about why it's important to have resolutions and how it's important to debate properly and stuff. So today I began prepping a new topic for actual debate, right? Real debate debates a resolution, not a person. They debate a position, not a person. So that's the first thing to remember. And the current resolution is rather an odd one, frankly, for Lincoln Douglas. The U.S. federal government ought to provide a federal go jobs guarantee. Very strange resolution indeed. Um, and the thing about it is it, it's revelatory about exactly what we need to think about when we're prepping a debate topic. So... Um, and, and why we have to have a topic, right? A, a clear resolution. Remember that in a competition flow debate, which is sometimes called switch side debate, people have to debate both sides of the resolution. So they need to understand that the arguments for each side are distinct and that there's blocks of arguments that link to each other. There's a lot of stuff you need to understand as basics before you can meaningfully debate anything. Or at least sort of, at least intuitively, intuitively understand, if not literally. I mean, if not explicitly, I guess would be a better way to put it. Um, this topic is a perfect example of how challenging it can be to take debate seriously. Because it's very easy to not take debate seriously. It's very easy to think that just arguing with somebody or baiting them emotionally or, or making someone look bad is winning a debate or something. That's not... That's, that's a tragedy of modern civilization that we think that goes, goes on on the internet and that what goes on between presidents on TV and that what goes on in classrooms called debate is debate. No. Debate is a way of determining what is correct through argumentation. In the same way that an adversarial system of justice is designed to produce the most justice. So too is argumentation, adversarial argumentation designed to produce the most truth, which is why it has to therefore be predicated on certain basic assumptions. Somebody is affirming something. What does that mean? It means somebody is saying, I agree with this statement and I support the statement and I advocate in favor of the statement. And the statement in, in the current LD topic is that the U S federal government should provide a jobs guarantee. The, federal, the, government, the U.S. should provide a federal jobs guarantee. So, what does that mean? Well, uh, like, what comprises an actual jobs guarantee? And are you talking about something like the the New Deal era Civil Corps of Engineers kind of thing? Um, would military service comprise a guaranteed job? Because there is a jobs guarantee of sorts uh, for anybody with an IQ above them. Yeah, they can always join the army. So does the status quo oh, hey. meet the standard of the affirmation? Probably not. It's not intended to because, of course, that's one of the basic rules you have to understand about debate if you're going to have a meaningful conversation about something rather than just waste my time. Yeah. So this this new resolution is a perfect example for me to go over what, why and how one debates something. You debate a topic, not a person. This is, this is rule number one about debate. Basic rules of debate for, for non-debaters. Number one, you debate a resolution slash topic slash plan, not a person. Okay? That's number one thing. To debate, 
before a debate can begin, before any kind of meaningful debate about something can begin, a debate can begin. There needs to be a clear position that somebody is affirming, a clearly stated affirmation, and a willing disputant, right? So if you want to debate me then, what's the first thing um, you got to do? Have to be a resolution. That means so there needs to be a resolution. The resolution should be established first. For example, the November, December resolution for Lincoln Douglas was released at the beginning of October. We don't start debating it until November. The resolution says the United States government should provide federal jobs. Guarantee. Okay, so um, if, let's say you don't you don't want to debate that you so firmly agree or disagree that you don't want to debate it, well, then you don't have to debate it. And whoever does debate it is willing to debate one side at least for the other of the debate topic, right? But the thing is, both parties then come in knowing what it is that they are debating about, one way or the other. If they agree or disagree with it. Number three, basic ground rules. Any meaningful debate, any actual debate, okay? It's not just a, an exercise in FE bullshit. The AF changes the status quo. The AF has the burden to affirm. What that means is If both debaters are silent the entire round, the neg wins because there's a burden to affirm. The neg can win simply by preventing the AF from affirming. You have to show that what you suggest we do is a good idea. I don't have to show that it's a bad idea. If I can simply prevent you from showing it's a good idea, I win the round. In other words, if you can't show there's a good reason why we should do something, then we should do nothing in default to the status quo. That's basic common sense, right? That's why debate is structured like this. There's a reason for that. Um, so I'm going to share this document, by the way. Basic rules of debate for non-debaters. <coughs> yeah. Okay, so here's the link to this. This is something that everybody who wants to, who thinks they want to talk to me about debate, they need to understand some basic things first. Debate is not <coughs> arguing with people, okay? Debate is a process by which argumentation is used to determine whether or not a given advocacy or affirmation ought to be affirmed or not. <coughs> Any other attempt to co-op co the word debate and use it to refer to some bullshit exchange between idiots is not debate. And I'm not going to tolerate it happening. What Trump and Biden do on TV, that is not debate. What that, that ass why I had to deal with last night is attempting to do, that is not debate. Debate is purposeful. And it allows an even chance for both sides to make their positions clear. If you are going into a debate determined to not make have any clear positions, to just be uh, to refuse to be pinned down on anything, then you're not interested in debating anything. You're interested in being rhetorically slippery or something. 
Well, good for you. That's fine. You've got your solipsism down, but I'm not interested in that shit. I'm interested in language that actually is purposeful and meaningful, you know? I should be prepping this topic right now instead of live streaming, but um, I'm not, I feel more like live streaming. So here I am live streaming, you know, I, uh, and I wanted to talk out the topic too, which is part of why I'm, I'm live streaming it because talking out this topic will help me to understand how better to prep it. So the biggest challenge with this topic, the, 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 US, the US should provide a federal jobs guarantee is what comprises a jobs guarantee? Is it a guarantee that anybody who wants a job and is able to work will be able to find a job and be able to work? Um, if so, what kind of job is the federal government going to guarantee people get? Is it going to be, it's a topic that begs for a plan, right? In other words, Lincoln Douglas debate, you're generally expected to affirm the entire statement that this is, a good idea as a general rule. Hi, Abraham. What up? You should, I mean, I, I'm fine with you doing that, but you should really consult with Octavia Silva, who's who I've kind of uh, handed over the those kind of questions to for the moment, who's not really doing a whole hell of a lot and might be motivated by you contacting them anyway. So can I shoot you their phone number? Well, no, it's, it's a person who came in and said they'd like to kind of manage shit and uh, it's complicated. Just just talk to her and see what you if you guys if you like talking to her working together or you guys have ideas you want to share with each other or something. And then if not, then just come back and say, no, it's not gonna work. And that's fine. You know, whatever. But let me let me shoot your her number. All right. Okay, so uh, um, um, how do I do this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Okay, uh, auto, auto alchemy. You want me to type, please? Auto alchemy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'd get more views than this. Um, DJ Granville. Yeah, I could type, please, DJ Granville. That's fine. But I don't really feel like type policing right now. I'm not sure how long this this particular live stream is going to be. I just I just uh, felt like discussing like see if you're serious about debate, you start with a resolution, and then you start thinking about it. Right? The resolution here is the U.S. the the, the U.S. should provide a federal jobs guarantee. If you're going to argue in favor of it, what arguments are you going to make? If you're going to argue opposed to it, what arguments are you going to make? There are concrete arguments you need to make, right? And you need to be understanding that that you're going to be stuck with those arguments that you, once you make them. So you want to be careful as to which ones you make. But you have to realize over time that it requires you to actually have a set of positions. That being able to argue both sides means you end up actually determining which arguments are best. 
and what the best position is. And even if you're practicing arguing something that you don't really believe in, like uh, I don't believe in compulsory voting, but I, I my kid argued in favor of it pretty successfully. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's like, there's something incredibly annoying to me about the, about Dunning-Kruger effect when it applies to debate. When somebody knows absolutely nothing about debate or rhetoric or argumentation or the way that things operate accordingly and assumes they're good at it and ought to be debating me rather than asking me questions and asking me to teach them things, which is what the only logical thing for anybody to do with me about debate. Um, it's, it's just ridiculous. It's so offensive because it's like, here's this person who knows absolutely nothing trying to, to like some sort of win some sort of stupid FE exchange with me. And it's just like, fuck off. I, my time's valuable. <laughs> the expertise I have is not just, um, is not just something that represents an interest of mine. It's, uh, it's, it's the result of many years of hard professional work. the exact sort of work I'm avoiding right now by having this live stream. But, you know, what I would do first if, um, if I were doing my work, I'd go to Google Scholar. I'd type in federal jobs programs, I guess. Um, And then I might go, I might move to custom range. I see the, all the initial stuff is like 2006, 1993, 1992. So, but I mean, it's relevant to look at old jobs programs as either successful or failures according to whatever metrics they provide. And of course that's significant as well. It's like, um, Bringing jobs to people, how federal policy can target job creation for economically distressed areas. Now, that's not the same thing as a job guarantee, right? So I'm going to go back to Google Scholar and make see, I'm going to type in actually federal job guarantee. Let's see. Usually these topics come out of somebody's advocacy. Like somebody's advocating this recently. Right. And here it is. Um, a path to ending poverty by way of ending unemployment, a federal job guarantee. Now, you're really talking about centralized communist kind of bullshit here at, that, at this point. The jobs guarantee a post Keynesian analysis, 2002. Uh, monetary policy is a jobs guarantee. This is going to be interesting because it's going to allow you to find jobs guarantee in a couple different ways. Why we need a federal jobs guarantee. Um, now this stuff's all recent. So this, that means this particular expression, this term of art, federal jobs guarantee is with, is, has come into being within the last four or five years. Right now, no, um, this is how a person engages with an actual debate topic and a debate matter successfully. This guy last I was dealing with last night was so frustrated with me because I, I was not playing along with his let's talk first thing. I say, no, we need a resolution if we're going to debate. That's the central issue here. Um, Ethan McDonald, I'm not saying that. Don't ask Eric questions because he knows everything. I never said anything like that. Um, I'm not saying debating me would be challenging my authority as the best debate coach out there. Not at all. I'm saying if you're going to debate me, then listen to me about how we should structure the debate, how, how, how debates are structured, right? If you want to debate me, then accept, for, accept the fact that when I'm telling you, we're not going to debate unless we have a resolution first because you're misunderstanding what a debate is. This guy thinks debating is debating another person. Debating is debating a 
an affirmation. Somebody is affirming something and you're saying, no, that's not true. You know? Um, this other shit that, that this guy wants to do is not meaningfully using argumentation to solve problems or determine what's correct. Well, because he wanted to recap what happened last time yeah. and try to reframe it so that it was it framed in his favor. I was like, I don't give a fuck about last time. I'm trying to avoid any experience related to last time. Yeah, the other guy wants to have a conversation that he can win by baiting me emotionally. And I'm saying, no, you're not going to do that. We're going to have an actual debate about a topic. And I'm going to demonstrate right now what it looks like to, to research a topic and to have a topic and all the considerations that go into place when, when thinking about what it means to debate a topic. So this federal jobs guarantee topic is perfect. I currently have open um, several PDFs from Google Scholars. One's called a path to ending poverty by way of ending unemployment and federal job guarantee. This is probably the article that prompted this particular topic, this, this session. Um, and, you know, okay, so here's one of the blocks of argumentation that, uh, that is going to be made is that unemployment is one of the strongest correlates with poverty, okay? That's going to be one block of argumentation. So on this, this particular topic, what I'm doing right now is I'm opening a new document. I'm going to call this AF cards. And I'm going to be smart this time. Instead of just starting to paste cards in right away, I'm going to insert a table so I can list the cards and what each of them does so we I don't have to do this later on with my lazy-ass ENTP debater. He's not really lazy. He's just, you know, T.E. shitty. So, okay, what's this first citation here? The citation, uh, let me get a cite. Well, let me post paste this first. Okay, so I'm going to... Paste this card here from, uh, let me get this citation now. So the citation on this, and the best way to get the citation is to get it from Google Scholar itself rather than from the article. So this article is called um, A Path to Ending Poverty. And here it is. So I just click the the cite button here that they have in Google Scholar. Copy the citation. I'll put it in the table of contents. So uh, I'll make column two cite citation. Um, column one card name. And what do you name the card? You name it the last name of the author plus the year. And if you have more than one of them, A, B, C. Um, I'll put the uh, warrant here in and uh, put impact area in column four. So when you're thinking properly about debate, then you do what I have just done here, which is you find this card that says a specific warrant that's a specific argumentational reason why a given claim is true. And then you, um, you use that to, yeah. Citation. Okay. Uh, so this is, Mark 2018. Your guys' last name is Mark. Uh, Mark 2018. A. The card reads, or the the full the full quote from this article reads: Moreover, unemployment is one of the strongest predictors of poverty. Households where whose usual breadwinners are out of work being three times more likely to be poor than working households, but working households are not immune from the plague of poverty. A job in and of itself is not a sufficient condition to escape poverty, given that at least 25% of workers earn wages below the poverty line and 44% are homeless individuals report having taken on paid employment in the past month. Non-poverty wages 
need to be an essential component of reducing poverty. Okay, so the thing here is, in this particular card, the part I really want is simply the warrant that unemployment is one of the strongest predictors of poverty, households, blah, blah, blah. And that they cite Achiron 2009 13. So I'm just going to highlight just that part. And since I'm not doing any internal ellipses, I can cut out the rest of this card and actually make it a card for the neg side. So the other thing is, I'll make a new document here and I'll make Mark. B, Mark 2018B, but on the neg side of the of the uh, of the argument, because this this particular card includes argumentation from both from both sides. F cards on jobs. Okay, new document. Neg cards. Jobs, and then I will once again insert the table. And I'll put card name, citation, warrant, impact area. And what I mean by impact area is it going to be measurable impacts in units like lives or dollars? Is it going to be an impact on a principal matter like uh, rights? Or is it going to be an impact on a ground matter like definitional matter? So the thing is, what one important takeaway I want to make sure gets conveyed here is that the people who, who, um, who come at me wanting to debate me they don't know any of this stuff, right? They don't know that there are different kinds of impacts. They don't know there are different kinds of statements. They don't know that what a warrant is. They don't know what any of that shit is, right? <laughs> so th that's extraordinarily frustrating to me because they're trying to debate with me, but they don't know what debate is. They don't know what it means to affirm something or negate something. And, and they don't want to learn, right? They definitely don't want to learn if they're an ENTP. They want to they want to control the frame, not allow me to control the frame, which is what that guy wants to do, you know? Um, so the Nate card on jobs then is the rest of this argument here, which is working households are not immune, non-poverty wages, Copy that, put it on the neg down here, and go back to the article. At the end of it. So, I mean, it's a very laborious process, obviously, preparing for a debate case. It's not something that you just throw together. Now, the thing is, if I were to debate Homie on a resolution that was meaningful, such as the actual position he was trying to articulate last time, which was that it's not, it's, it's uh, not reasonable to say that one's, one's positions on faith are necessarily magical thinking. That it's possible to have faith-based uh behaviors that are rationally justified. That was basically what the argument boiled down to because he didn't like my approach to being a theist, you know, or a Christian in particular. He wanted my approach to be a Christian to be something he already knew how to argue against. And so when I, when I, um, when I explained to him that, that I've actually already supplanted all that argumentation and, and, have a better way of arguing it and was going to win, he just shifted sides. I'm not going to let that happen again, right? So one of the reasons I want to explain all of this is to, um, to drive home the point that people who want to debate me need to understand a little bit first. It's like if you want to take my 
If you want to play a uh, calculus battle with me, you have to at least understand arithmetic and subtraction. Okay. I can't, you don't have to understand calculus yet, but you have to at least understand arithmetic and subtraction and multiplication maybe. Right. Um, Cloud, do you know my, uh, my daughter is going as a slutty cloud for Halloween. Yeah. Facts. So congratulations. She's you. Yeah. She's slutty you for Halloween. In other words, just regular you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no offense, Cloud. No offense at all. You like to get your penis wet. Yeah, with different women. My daughter's being a slutty cloud for like Halloween. Literally a slutty cloud. Like a cloud, you know. Yeah, she's, she's gonna, gonna put like uh, like cotton over her boobs, like in and then, cut, and like a cloud part. Cloud, yeah. yeah, cloud skirt. Have some raindrops, you know. Do you think any of those can be possible tests for functions? Human benchmark dashboard. They're gonna have fun. Halloween in New York is fun. I've only been to New York City um, for Halloween once. Cause it's like, it's a trip, you know, like it's crowded and there's people everywhere, uh, but it's really fun. You'll get, she'll get to meet the most random people that night if she goes out. I'm sure there's a party they're going to most likely. That's even better. Halloween parties rule. Oh, Kitty Pageant winner. That was your work. This is fun. This test, this uh, human benchmark test, the chimp test. I'm on to number nine right now. What is it? I need to remember. Mm hmm. Ah, I got it wrong. All right, now I'm on to number 10. I got three strikes. I've only struck out one time so far. I got 10 that time. I I couldn't get the 10. Everybody else try that too. See what you get on it, okay? I want to see. Compare your score with mine. We're doing this test here that's called the human benchmark test. The chimp test is the first one. I got 10. See if anybody can uh, beat my score of 10, okay? So I did the chimp test first. Um, and now I'm going to do the... Uh, visual memory test, which is probably uh, it's very similar to the chimp test, I guess. Visual memory test, memorize the squares. Okay. I see, you memorize which ones are white, okay. This one, interesting. Okay. My oh, you are? Yeah. Time to not pull out. My favorite time of the month. Mm -hmm. You said we do a Catholic style. <laughs> yeah, we do it Catholic styles, right? It may start today. I do. I 100% feel something's gonna happen. I'm on seven now. Eight now. Mm. 
Is this one more? <sighs> this? 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 Nine. <sighs> I got nine on visual memory. All right, so let's see how people are doing. I got 10 on Chimp and nine on visual memory. RC got 10 on Chimp. Try visual memory as well, okay? So I got uh, 10 on Chimp and nine on visual memory. I'm going to go on to the next test now and see how I do. Now I'm going to do reaction time. Test my visual reflexes. When a red box turns green, click as quickly as you can. Start anywhere. Click anywhere to start. Okay. Wait for green, then click, huh? 497 milliseconds. 40 milliseconds. 372 milliseconds. <coughs> four, 473 milliseconds. So I think my high, my best score was a little under under 400 milliseconds. I'm going to try that one again. This is interesting. 388 milliseconds. 358 milliseconds, 439 milliseconds, 389 milliseconds, 386 milliseconds. Okay, so 386 milliseconds, that's the one I'm going for on that one. So let's see how people did on the other one. If you... Your reaction time is 231 milliseconds. That might be a possible SE test. Yeah, you're you're right. That might be a possible SE test. Um, let me put a link to this this test I'm taking here, uh, humanbenchmark.com. I took the, uh, the the best I got was about 380 on the um, visual reaction time. So it it is true that SE is my my back slot function. I tried to, it's weird. I was trying to put myself in SE mode, kind of NISE mode, you know. Uh, all right, I'm going to try another one of these tests. Um, aim trainer. Hit 30 targets as quickly as you can. Okay, this one I'm going to probably need to get a surface or else I'll be at a disadvantage. Maybe I'll bring this table. Okay, here we go. I got an average time per target of a of a thousand twenty seven milliseconds. I'm gonna try this one one more time. See if I can beat that. You just have to hit the target. It doesn't matter where. Yeah. stresses me out I gotta say it makes me feel tense like ah 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 um my hearing is the worst let me try uh hearing Oh, 
fifteen one ninety seven. I think it's going to be about the same, maybe a little bit slightly higher than that. Let me turn up the volume. Actually, I could hear it way up there with the volume up. I hear it there. I hear it at 20,000. Yeah, I do. It's not, I don't think that's, that's right. You heard that too, right? Yeah, I don't think that's right. That's not 20,000. Um, all right, let me see about number memory. Remember the longest number you can. The average person can remember seven numbers at once. Can you do more? Start. Oh, I see. Eight. Next. Next. Six. Next. Nine. Next. Eighteen five twenty eight. Eighteen five twenty eight. Next. One forty five oh four. 145504 Next 632 3483 632 3483 632 3483 6 632 oh, I didn't mean to add the 6 at the end that was an accident Um Okay, well, that, there was a mistype there. I added an extra six at the end by pushing two numbers at the same time. 46. Next, 146. Eighty-one, eighty-two. Thirty-one seven three seven. Thirty-one seven three seven. Thirty-one seven three seven. Next. Eight two five nine zero two. Eight two five nine zero two. Eight two five nine zero two. Next. Seven seven zero nineteen seventy seven. Seven seven zero nineteen seventy seven. Next eight three zero eight seven 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 three. Eight three zero eight seven 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 three. Level eight. Eight eight seven two nine four four 887294484 Level 9 363 Correct level 10 203 775 37,850. 203-775-37850. 203-775-Ah, I got it wrong. 37,850. I only got to level 10 on visual memory. Or number memory. I'm, you know, right there near the top of the bell, bell curve. The average person can remember seven, but the mean is nine. So, um, 
Okay, let's try another one of these. These are fun. I like these tests. How about verbal memory? You will be shown words one at a time. If you've seen a word during the test, click scene. If it's a new word, click new. Herbicidal. Winter killing. Herbicidal. Winter killing. Tempted. Tushed. Herbicidal. Winter killing. Overflown. Deaccessions. Aerodynamic. Tempted. Tushed. Overflown. Aerodynamic. Winter killing. Vocalism. Tushed. Winter killing. Ovality. Vocalism. Overflown. Oasis. Overflown. Vocalism. Fantods. Corded. No, no, not seen. New. No, corded. That was, I clicked the wrong one. Let's try again. Bowels. New. Exterminating. New. Bowels. Seen. Bipolar. New. Gothic. New. Exterminating. Seen. Cottager. New. Bipolar. Seen. Exterminating. Seen. Gothic scene. Aircraft, new. Kinds, new. Cottager scene. Charbroiled scene. Kinds, scene. Gothic scene. Bipolar scene. Gothic scene. Pentathlons, new. Bipolar scene. Reality scene. New. Cottager scene. Runoff, new. Dependence, new. Totalized, new. Neuropath, new. Gothic scene. Exterminating scene. Lux new, dependence scene, neuropath scene, dependence scene, runoff scene, aircraft new. Ah, I lost yeah, that one wrong. Coacting new, gothic scene, labeler new, gothic scene, soundboard new, neuropath scene, pneumochi new, kinds scene, labeler scene, dependence scene, labeler scene. Bless is new. Reality scene. Kind scene. Wanderette new. Coacting scene. Totalized scene. Deplanning new. Abhorrent new. Object new. Mitochondria new. Lilied new. Carbonization new. Boscage is new. Dependent scene. Gothic scene. Sup new. Accelerative new. Mitochondria scene, slither new, coacting scene, sup scene, crystallizes new, accelerative scene, gothic scene, thrillingly new, blesses scene, marbles new, deep planning scene, cottager scene, kinds scene, bowels scene, runoff scene, neuropath scene, kind scene, blesses scene, non possessive new, prosiest new, Neuropath seen, Boscage is seen, Reasonable new, ob Obliques new, Mitochondria seen, Runoff seen, Pigskin new, Numerably new, Coacting seen, Labeler seen, Curritage new, Inquisitory new, Accusal new, Sprites new, Curritage seen, Graduations new, Nemochi seen, Levine new, Diane new, would been new, coacting scene, Diane scene, reasonable scene, crystallizes scene, coacting scene, regime new, curtage scene, carbonization scene, abhorrent scene, non possessive scene, eremites new, object scene, lily scene, marble scene, lux scene, carbonization scene, fantastists new, thrillingly. Scene. Thanks, Rachel. Scene kinds. Unpurified new. Coacting scene. Severable new. Sup scene. Prosiest scene. Deterring is new. Tallers is new. Sprites is seen. ASCII is new. Accusal is seen. Copy holder is new. Stiplers is new. Transmission is new. Encumbrance is new. Salubrid salubrity is new. Pummeling is new. Diana is seen. Escapade is new. Enmesh is new. Object is seen. Numerably is seen. Silverer is new. Sorrel is new. Unpurified is seen. 
Sive gum tree is new. Protuberance is new. Amputator is new. Fantastic is seen. Copy older seen. Non mechanically is new. Thrillingly is seen. Coacting is seen. Object is seen. Clothes press is new. Dependence is seen. Cottager is seen. Reasonable is seen. Mimochi is seen. Crystallize is seen. Accusal is seen. Laundrette is seen. ASCII is seen. Reality seen. Thrillingly seen. Suppresses is new. Hosta is new. Marbles is seen. Aramites is seen. Labeler is seen. Obliqui is seen. Stonecutter is new. Diane is seen. Dependence is seen. Object is seen. Beadman is new. Ricketts is new. Conjugation is new. Kinds is seen. Drumheads is new. Pigskin is seen. Cuter is new. Millennia is new. Inquisitory is seen. Carters is new. Obliques is seen. Decongestive is new. Demonize is new. Consciences is new. Crumbed is new. Malts is new. Melts is new. Bipolar is seen. Cottager seen. Vicarily new. Petrols is new. Judgments is new. Hawks is new. Whim is new. Lily is seen. Drumheads is seen. Judgments is seen. Hawks is seen. Skyrote is new. Non mechanically seen. Northings is new. Decongestive is new. Ah, 204. Oh, I'm way above the top. The top of the curve here is 130. Good for you. Thanks. You're welcome. I did get help with you on one of them. Teamwork. Little teamwork never yeah. hurt. So, okay. I, that seems to be, I'm better at that one than the other ones. 204. That's curious. I, I'd be curious to have people take that test right there. How, the how do people do on that one? I think that the, uh, the, the aim, aim one and the uh, other one there might be great SE tests. Uh, Octavia Silva, Reaction Time, and yeah, aim, trainer. aim Trainer. Those both might be good SE tests. Yes, they would. How do people do on the verbal memory one? Mm. You. you got everything correct. What, what's your score on the verbal memory, Kyra? Well, you know, Well, that would be fun, I'm sure, the mental IQ test. But um, the thing that appeals to me about those tests is they're short enough that I can actually give them to people during a typing session and see, you know, test them out and see how how people do on them. I'm curious if... Um, I could do that test for you, sure, but um, I'd probably be wider to do it. Um, okay. Well, this is the key point I want to say, David Sanderson. What I've been saying all along, and you've been ignoring. If you, if you want to do debate stuff and you want my input in the matter, you're asking somebody who really knows what they're talking about. But when I tell you the number one thing is you have to have a resolution first. First establish a resolution, then find people who want to debate on either side of it. That's the order of operations here. Then you won't have you won't have any any more problems, right? Find a resolution first, establish a resolution, and then find people who I want to debate the aft side of that, and then somebody else I want to debate the next side, and there you go. You won't have any problems then.
it's why I I titled this live stream um, Octavia Silva. I gave Abraham your phone number. What? Yeah, I did. He he's working on some stuff, and I want and he wanted to coordinate with me about graphics and stuff. And I said, well, ask see what Octavia Silva says about it. Uh, David Jensen, stop worrying about me debating him. If you want to set up debates in general, establish a resolution and find two people who want to debate on either side of it, you know? Instead of trying to find people who want to debate first, you're going about it the wrong direction, is what I'm saying. Establish the resolution that's going to be debated and find people who are eager to take one or the other side of it. Yeah, I'd take the test. Sure. Um, but I suspect if I was going to take it, people would... It'd be better to take it on the live stream where um, you can see what I'm doing, you know? How long does it take to take? Is it a long test? Test.minsa.no. Tell you who won the kitty pageant. Who won the kitty pageant? Capio Strauss. You're probably right. Also known as PP Strauss or the PNP. Okay, so this is a 25 minute time limit, and uh, there's 35 problems. Okay. Entirely of visual patterns with progressive difficulty. Well, I can tell you right now, visual patterns are not my strength. So I probably am not going to score particularly well on this. You know, um, I tend to do better with uh, with TI style questions, namely deductive reasoning problems, uh, language problems. As you can see, my verbal memory is good. It's way off the charts uh, on that that human human metrics test whereas i didn't score anything close to way off the charts um i'll put the link here uh for any of the other things i i'm definitely a um i'm configured i'm configured heavily skewed in one direction, right? My skills and my abilities and my kind of intelligence is heavily skewed towards verbal reasoning and away from other kinds of reasoning skills. I'll still take the test. I don't mind if I score poorly on it. It's fine. Do you mind passing me the pink drink? Sure. Thank I think if I'm going to take it, I should, well, I guess I'll just take it. I'll just take it right now. We'll see how it goes. Oh, I already know I hate these kind of problems. <sighs> okay. Well, this one will be A. Okay, so the plus moves or the plus should be, and then the empty one moves, so the empty one should be empty triangle. Okay, that, that in the middle, and that, that in the middle, and that, that in the middle. Um, meh, 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 meh. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so it moves over and over there. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, uh, it goes like what? One, two, three, two, three, four, three, four. It's going to have five total. Is there only one that has five in it? Or is it going to have six? There's none that have five. Oh, this one has five. It's got to be this one. Okay. Um, meow, 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 meow. Okay, um, of course, this is, yeah, the ends are big, the middle thin big, the middle big, the ends are small. Uh, huh, huh. Three on the sides, three on the bottom, three on the top. In the middle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beats the shit out of me. Um, I don't know. I have very little. I guess it would be. Can't spend too much time on any one problem. Um, so I'm gonna go isn't there. this one, maybe, or this one. No, it, it's maybe this. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. This one here. Yeah, I go with that one. Okay, so the box is here. The box is here. The box is here. It's here. The box is 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 gonna be here again. The dot also. The dot moves though. So the dot, dot, would be dot. And then in this one, it'll be over. Yeah. The dot will be on the right. And the box will be here. Yeah. Like this one. Okay. Um, up, left, black, white, black. Okay. Um, uh, um, mm, 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 hmm, hmm, hmm. This is the uh, opposite of this. This is the opposite of this. Opposite of this would be this. I think it's this one. Circles, uh, oval, oval in box, box without anything. Oval with dot, double oval with dot in box, oval in box. Dot, single oval, dot and single oval without a box. Dot. Okay, um, yeah, let's see, uh, okay, well, it's going to be one of these, um, so that one, that one represented, so it's, okay, um, that one's, meh, meh, that one's, meh, meh. This one's I think it's this one for some reason. Um
This is mostly an NI and TE test, I think. Uh, okay, black circle, empty triangle, gray square. Gray triangle, black square, empty circle. Empty square, gray circle, black triangle. Um... Okay, so the line is diagonal, horizontal, up and down. Um, so this one should be horizontal line through a circle like this. Um, one, two, three, three, two, one, one, two, three. And one. Okay, um, up, down, right, left, right, up. Down, left, up, with three dots. Umbrella, 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 umbrella. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, it starts here again. Okay. Yeah, well, it starts with one before. Okay, yeah, then yeah, then yeah, then yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Meow, 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 meow. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's going to be like, yeah. Okay. Um, two and two makes three and one. Two and two makes two and two. Two and two makes three and one. Okay. Um, diamond in a box, circle and dots, plus. Dots with nothing. Diamond in a cross, circle in a box. Circle in a cross, nothing in a box. Dots around a diamond. U Z Mia. Extra Z Mia X Mia X Mia. So there's four lines, they move different ways. Okay. That one only has three lines though. This one only has three lines. This one only has three lines. And this one has four lines. So four. Three, four, four, three, three. It has three lines. Intersections then. No intersection, no intersection. No intersection. Wait, wait how about number of triangles? Triangles, one triangle, one triangle, one triangle, one triangle, one triangle, two triangles. Huh. I really don't see a pattern here except for so it's four three four four three three. Three, four, um, there's, you know, open, yeah, complicated, open, yeah, more complicated, um, yeah.
That has too many lines, though. There's A. Okay. Um, four boxes, two boxes. So get rid of those two. So this is like split, combine, get rid of. What are these things? This is one, two, three, four, five. This is this is the extra line that's necessary to make that. I got gotcha. you. If you add this to those things, this is the extra bits you need to make that. You need the extra bits to make this are going to be this. Okay. Um, circle, circle, square, circle, square, square. Um... I think it's this one. Okay, um, I'm almost out of time. I got 147 left. Um, Is there a B or F? Um, F. Hi, Dad. Hello. How's it going? Good. Thanks. Thank you. Very kind of you. I appreciate it. Uh, um, I have no idea. <laughs> I guess, oh, I see. Add those two together again. Uh, this, these things are impossible for me. You add the two things together and see what it is. Uh, it's like this. I got nine seconds left. Okay. Uh, wait, why do I have nine minutes left all of a sudden? Oh, cause I wasn't looking at Okay, I actually have nine minutes left. I rushed that last one because I didn't realize I had nine minutes left. Okay, that's fine. Now I'll take my time on these ones. All right, so, um, meh, 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 meh. Mm. Yeah. I think it's D. I think it's Oh, those ones switch oh, around. Cuz Yeah, I need to see. Okay. Um,
But the things that cross, cross each other off. Okay. So it's going to cross off that. It's going to cross off that. Add that. I, I hate these kind of tests. It's interesting that this is the kind of intelligence Mensa prioritizes. It makes sense because only TE people would care that much about about their their qualifications to be to call themselves a genius. You know. Uh, let's see here. One line and one dot, or two boxes and one dot. Four thirty seven, four minutes and thirty seven seconds left. Okay. Okay, I think I get this one where they touch, they fill in. Okay. Going through the white tension. Or a few possibilities. So if that's one possibility, and the other possibility would be meh. I can tell you right now, I'm doing terribly on this. Um, I got my period. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. No. Um, I'm 
too sad though, right? Because I don't want to no, feel bad. Not with him. Fine, baby. Ain't no diggity thing. <laughs> I have 30 seconds left. I think this is the last question. I mean, I have no idea on most of these things. I'm just sort of going with my gut as to what. This is this is exactly the sort of question. I've described this before. This is exactly the sort of question I typically do badly on, on intelligence tests. Uh, 107. So, that's, um, about right for my T-E-N-I. It's about right, 107. I'm very average. Of course, I think it's, again, very telling that Mensa uses such a, uh, such a T-E- a TE test, you know, it's like, as soon as I took it and it's, it's like, well, this is all going to be visual pattern recognition. I was like, okay. Um, no, <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I knew I was going to do shitty on it immediately because I have lots of experience taking these kind of tests. As soon as I hit those kind of questions, I, uh, I do terribly on them. Well, I took the Mensa test, which is very TE heavy. It's very visual pattern recognition. There's no verbal reasoning skills. What's interesting is I also took a human metrics test where I got uh, my score on the verbal memory was was 204 and like the, the curve ends at like 130 or something. So it's uh, it's not surprising that a test that excludes all of my particular skill areas is going to test me as very average. I mean, I am. I'm just an average person except for the specific area of intelligence that I am particularly adept at, you know? And if you have an IQ test that prior prioritizes verbal reasoning score, uh, or, or, or verbal reasoning skills, then I'll probably test higher intelligence than I actually am by any, by any meaningful recognition of the thing, you know? Zandy scored 126 too. So, I mean, it shows you that there's, uh, there's a high NI component in there as well. I'm NI ignoring and um, um, and I'm also TE6. So it doesn't surprise me at all. 
they don't want TI intelligence in Mensa probably because TI intelligence is likely to question the whole idea of Mensa. You know, it makes sense that people would want to uh, exclude the kind of intelligence that's likely to beat them in all of the arguments, but be considered less intelligent by TE people. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, with a verbal memory of 204, that's pretty damn good. Anybody can anybody gonna beat that? I'll give you the human metrics for the uh, for the verbal memory. I, I suspect it's must link to any. Go ahead and try that one. See if you get if you can get to two hundred and four. Um, I'm curious if you know it's like if there's any other any doms here. If it's an extroverted intuition thing, that that verbal memory test, because I I'm actually surprised I didn't do do better. I would consider myself likely to be able to do that for twice as long without without forgetting which words I've heard before. It's just like. Built into me, you know. How did I do on the Mensa test? I got 107. That test isn't meaningful. That's that's exactly the wrong kind of test. That political compass test is exactly what I'm saying is wrong with the world, right? It is incorrect to try to put you in into some sort of agenda box because the correct approach to politics is to take a a specific approach towards every specific political position and policy question independently of even, of an agenda, you know? Agendas are bad. It cannot be. What? I feel like it's so much warmer than it was before. I keep on having to, like, change. Well, you know, an analyst is going to say, um, oh, no. I took this test and I got 107. I must not be very bright. A meta analyst is going to say, okay, well, what is this test testing? And are the people who are making this test actually very bright? And the reality is the people who are making that test and are thinking that that test intelligence are not very bright people. If they were, they'd be aware of the fact that they're just imposing a certain function bias on intelligence. Now, granted, intelligence inherently is representative of a function bias, but they're limiting their function bias to NITE. You, you know, it's like you got a bunch of INTJs who want to just have a bunch of other INTJs in Mensa, I guess. INTJs should kick ass on that test. Uh, you know, Rachel seemed to have good instincts about it as well. Perhaps she'd do even better than I would do on it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I trip myself up on those things. I think, see, it's easier from my perspective, right? Like chiming in every once in a while. But I tend to overanalyze, you know? I ignore my NE, so I have to take those tests very slowly. That's uh, where I do that. That's where I do poorly, because I end up doing it too slow. Hmm. My position is that Jordan Peterson's an ENTJ, yeah, not an INTJ. It's very much so an ENTJ. So just to clarify for everybody who who cares a lot about intelligence tests and has wanted me to take one for a long time, you got your desired wish. I scored 107 on the Mensa test. So if you want to say Eric is not very smart because he only scored 100, he only has an intelligence of 107, you're welcome to say that. Isn't the top of 125? The top on that test is 140. Uh -huh. um, so uh but, you know, I'd point out, okay, well, if I'm so dumb, then why do I score 204 on the verbal memory? Well, because the Mensa test is so dumb, right? <laughs> it's like, they should call it the INTJ test. But not according to that test, 107 isn't smarter than 99% of people. 107 is... is Dumb. Oh, yeah. I mean, verbal memory, I'm way off the chart. He only goes up to 130 or something. All 
And remember, I am somebody for, for the um I was I am somebody who smokes a shit ton of weed too, right? Supposedly, weed affects your memory and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You don't need to know the words. I have the best girlfriend. Aw, thanks, babe. No one's ever said that to me before. It's true. Um, I mean... I messed up the first time by pushing the wrong thing. Yeah, I've heard of David Hume. In fact, when I was in high school, and I wrote on the newspaper, I wrote under the pen name of Hume. He was my first, my first, the first philosopher I liked, really, or had a, you know, it's like, this guy seems to get it right. Well, that does explain things a little bit. But, you know, I suspect that asswipe is also an ENTP. So it does not turn out that the ENTPs actually end up thinking well necessarily. Here, Peter, have some bread. Um, the thing is, I like, I'm going to probably say to people when they ask my IQ from now on, I'm going to tell them it's 107 because I think that makes my point better than anything else, you know? Hey, I got good news. I put in our Casio biorhythms for December 25th. And they're all aligned. Hmm. Yeah. That's great. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I think it's going to be a special one. I mean, if I, I would say, David Sanderson, that if you're right about him being an FI user, then he's an ENFP, not an INFP. That would explain a lot as to why I just cannot tolerate his bullshit for a second. Fun fact, C.S. Joseph says IQ is 107. Well, you know, if I were to take a full blast IQ test by the people who put out the standardized IQ test, I suspect I'd score in the range of high 120s, low 130s. But again, I think it's incredibly stupid, pointless, you know, number thing to apply. It's the same thing as the big five. I'm not intelligent or not intelligent or whatever. I have certain skill sets. I've got certain, um, I've got certain areas where I'm going to be predominant intellectually. And I'm going to have certain areas where I'm going to get my ass whooped intellectually. And that's fine. You know, it's like, um, cloud says he got 137 on an IQ test. Well, I mean, that shows you what, what to make of IQ tests, right? It's like, I'm quite confident that even if I took a formal IQ test, I wouldn't get 137. I, I don't think I'd get that high. There's just too many questions of the sort that I'm not good at. And so, um, does that mean the cloud's more intelligent than me? Well, not on any meaningful metric of intelligence, obviously. I don't think cloud's dumb, but if we're gonna if we're going to use the word intelligence to mean something, it's got to mean some things and not other things. And so, according to Mensa, I'm dumb, and Cloud is probably more intelligent than me because he's uh, he'd probably do better on that Mensa test than I would. You know? Oh, that's right. I'm rolling a joint. Once again, I crumble it up, and then <laughs> now David Sanderson does not like to use ad hominem attacks at all. That's quite. It's an untrue statement, Cloud. See, this this is the thing. Words matter. 
If you're going to accuse somebody of something, that's fine. But make sure they're actually guilty of that thing. And and it's like, it's one thing when, you, when you're just baiting with, with random absurd statements about the universe, the nature of things or whatever. When you're accusing somebody of something, it's important to know that you're actually correct about it. David Sanderson is not somebody who uses ad hominem attacks. That guy last night, Matt, he is for sure. He, he, in fact, he tried to do nothing but deal with you know me as a person and my emotionality rather than any than working towards finding an actual resolution to argue about. You know. Oh, he's this asswipe I who tried to avoid a debate with me again last night. I don't make arguments worth attacking. That's true. I make very careful, nuanced arguments. Somebody who wants to debate me, therefore, is going to find it frustrating if asked to actually debate something. You make cloud. I mean, I like to think I don't make arguments worth attacking. I'm very careful in my argumentation. That's why somebody who's actually a good debater, and I will have trouble um, debating because it's gonna it's gonna be difficult for us to find a resolution about which we disagree and are willing to argue. You know. Well, sure. I mean, look, people can people are welcome to attack my arguments all they want. The problem is my arguments are not low hanging fruit. I'm not making statements that are easy to attack. I'm making nuanced claims. If you're making bold claims that are, are not very nuanced, they typically are easy to attack. If you're making nuanced claims, it's difficult to attack. The reason it's difficult to attack my arguments is because they're very well thought out, you know? And, you know, the, the current debate resolution, David Sanderson, for L. Lincoln Douglas, which I'm supposed to be prepping right now, but instead I'm live streaming. I bet I will, too. Right, fancy Deluxe. Always must ask any advice on E to be male, ENFJ female relationships should work pretty well. It really should work pretty well. Um, some people would say um, that I'm in one now. You know, I've had people say that Rachel's an ENFJ. I typed her originally as an ENFJ, but she's not. But regardless, uh, it should work out pretty well. It's just at the end of the day, you're going to get zero SI from them. Not even the little occasional bits of SI help that I get from Rachel. You know, you'll get none. And when you want examples, it's going to be frustrating because they're not going to be able to give you examples. And when you give them examples, it's going to be frustrating because it's not going to be meaningful for that. The debate, the debate topic I'm prepping right now, Truth is Freedom Florida, is resolve the federal government should provide a jobs guarantee. Um, now, thing is that's the competition flow debate topic so i have to prep both sides of it i'm it's not something that i agree with or, I, I mean i disagree with it but that's the topic i'm supposed to be prepping uh for lincoln douglas right now did i ever make that video making fun of si doms <laughs> no i don't think i did uh So anyway, um, ENFJ girls, the thing I would worry about is they don't, they don't understand, ENFJs are less likely than other types to understand their relationships as um, growing investments. In other words, well, I've invested a lot of time into this is not something that matters to an NI tool user. Uh, it matters a lot to SI types, including ENTPs. And so that's an area where there's going to be a difference between the ENFJ and the ENTP. ENFJ and ENTP at least are both very metaphysical types. So they can agree that statuses and words are often more important than realities. But ENFJ is less like that than INFJ because they've got SE third slot. So they might have some problems, but it should work out pretty well for a while anyway. It should be fun. <laughs> From what I understand, ENFJs are freaks in the bedroom. Absolute freaks. Like, 
here, put on this alien costume. I'm going to chain myself self to the water heater in the basement. You want that? <laughs> no. It's my description of ENFJ women. I was going to say, because we can work that. Yeah. No, I, we don't have a basement, Rachel. I can't. I don't know. No way to chain you to the, to the water heater in the basement because we don't have one. That sounds good, actually. Can you find an ENFJ girl on eBay? I don't know about that. Probably not. No. Zandy will confirm. You can find uh, ENFJs at yoga studios. They love yoga. And I don't want to blanket statement it, but uh, I know a few who um, taught and uh, loved yoga. Like, it just seems to be like their meditation sort of, I don't know, like spiritual thing for them. Do I remember your disturbing mix of emojis? No. I will tell you this. ENFJs, you go to a place where somebody is giving spiritual advice of a universal and banal nature. There, you're likely to find either ENFPs or ENFJs. You're making me think about my friend Jenny. I'm like, where, like, where would you see? It's so school. How do INFP, I mean, I, ENFP ISTP relationships work out. ENFP ISTP. I would suspect that that would work out very poorly. What ESTP ENFP? ISTP oh, ENFP. Oh yeah, I think that's bad. Um, in sociotics, I think it's a conflictor or a. Uh... Yeah, I think that would work out quite poorly. I don't think that's a good choice there. They do seem to be attracted to them. The types do seem to be attractive, but um, I mean, I'm not doing you like that. ENFP ISTP, I'm saying, is a bad relationship. Not ENFP with anybody. Like ENFP with ISTJ, I think that's a working relationship. ENFP with um, with I INTJ, that's a working relationship. I don't think that ENFP and ISTP is a working relationship. Oh, with that thing, Fancy Deluxe. Well, it's true. You, you ENFPs and ENFJs both like your universally ridiculous nonsense. But the difference is ENFJs is universally ridiculous just because it's kind of banal, whereas ENFPs is universally ridiculous because it's wrong. It's just them applying their particular stuff to the universal. No offense to either ENFJs or ENFPs. You know, it's like when ENFJs give advice, I go, and you were going to say something surprising or what? Love is good. <laughs> War is bad. Okay. Thanks for the wisdom. I want to find out. I'm looking up right now. <laughs> ENFP. Ooh, that's a good one. And I'm uh, wrong about ISTJ. what? Look, I it is I am right about yeah, that. Conflicting. NFPs when they make universal statements about what people ought to do or what ought to be in the world, they're always wrong. ICP ENFPs conflicting relationships. Be careful. Yeah, be careful of that. Yeah, you're likely to undermine each other without even meaning to. Mm -hmm. Just like I'm going to undermine the weed in this bowl by lighting it on fire and hanging. Yeah, it. you are. That's my You have a hard time believing that I'm undermining the weed in that bowl by lighting it on fire? Well, I just proved it by demonstrating it. Scenes believing, as they say. <laughs> Look, <coughs> everybody. <coughs> Talk is cheap. Actions will matters. 
And this is something that even though they're a metaphysical type, ENFJ, I think, is, is possibly likely to say, yeah, I agree with that. Because of their SE third. ENFP, ENFJ is quasi identical, so they can be friends. Quasi identical. Oh, yeah. It can be friendly, but one's going to talk more than the other, and then they're going to get annoyed by it. All right, I got a split talky mushroom because I got a 2, 2 p.m. appointment with Chloe to work on. Logic. This is helping so much right now. You have no idea. For me, like. Mm. My girlfriend, who I suspect is ENFJ, is quite idealistic, almost utopian because of universal beliefs, but not always realistic. Like, I like to call myself, but nevertheless admire her for it. I feel that way about ENFJs, too. That's nice that you think your simple truths are, are so, mm -hmm. so powerful. They're not really, but I appreciate your, your efforts. That's what I feel about it. You're not very judgmental either. I, I'm not very judgmental. I really am not. I make jokes and stuff around here by different types, but in, in reality, when I'm dealing with actual human beings... Um, it's on an individual basis. Yeah. Very... It's like, if somebody wants to be real with me, I'll be real with them. And if somebody doesn't want to be real with me and... and hates being real because they think they're in some sort of competition, like homie, then I, I've got no time for that nonsense. All right. So I didn't say SE third makes them agreeable. I said SE third is maybe an ENFJ is going to be more likely to agree with the statement that talk is cheap words, that actions, what matters than any of the other metaphysical types. Later, home skillets. Catch yeah. you on the flip-flop.